Hey guys, Dr. Pete here from HPT Schools. We're talking about how to maximize student outcomes. And this takes us to the work of John Hattie and his list of 252 factors where this one here, collective teacher efficacy, has the biggest effect size in terms of student achievement. But the question of course is, Beyond science and research, does this work in the real world? Now we know collective teacher efficacy is the collective belief of teachers in their ability to positively impact upon student learning. And we know of course from Albert Bandura's work, there are four factors that make up collective efficacy, mastery experience, social persuasion, vicarious experience, and effective states. We can look at job satisfaction, performance feedback, peer support, and work life and well-being as indicators. And finally, we know that we can put all of this together in a Team Pulse program where we're doing weekly online pulse surveys across those four areas, targeted 10 minute booster activities in teaching teams, and track our data in real time, month by month, to make sure we're maximizing collective teacher efficacy. Okay, so we know what collective teacher efficacy is all about. We know how to practically implement something to improve it. Uh, let's look at some data now, and in particular, focus in on whether or not collective efficacy in teachers goes up. And of course, the question, do student grades go up? Let's look at it now. Now, on the screen, you can see a big, big color chart full of numbers, etc. This is a high school leadership team dashboard, a roll up of all the major things. But just to get focused now, the bits that are circled, that's the bits we're interested in, the collective efficacy. And in this case, we're just looking at A standard, student A grades. Moving through this then, we've now highlighted where the interesting bits are within collective efficacy, this peer support, and of course the uh, term one to term two overall A grade achievement. Drilling even further now, here it gets interesting. What you can see in this shot is the pre-post, the improvement or otherwise in peer support, and the increase or decrease in student A grades. And what's really interesting here is wherever you have declining peer support in those faculties, these teaching staff, you're seeing a corresponding reduction in student A grades. And conversely, where you see peer support grows over the 12 months within those faculties, within those teachers, you can see a corresponding increase in student A grades. So what does this mean practically? Well, let's have a look here. You can see here my teacher peer support, and just like that data on that dashboard, you can now see my student A grades, and this is what it means. Look, if we don't need a lot of A grades in our school, just one of those will be fine, then we only need to put a little bit of effort into teacher support. That's what that data tells us. But flourishing schools, let me tell you, what they want is they want every student succeeding. They want the maximum amount of achievement they can get. And to do that, of course, this data tells us that we've got to invest heavily in teacher peer support. We've got to make that really a focus to really equip these teachers to have strong working relationships with each other and their students. So let's bring this together. The point of this quick video was to have a look at collective teacher efficacy and have a look at student outcomes and move beyond the research into the practical world of schools and ask the question, does this really work? And of course, when we think about that question, here we are. The answer is yes, it does.